these tall chairs, ladies. I'm so That's sorry. Okay. I think it's the rough principle. So. <laughs> <laughs> At least my panties match my shoes. <laughs> so much for being here. Um, I, I think I speak for a lot of folks in this room where we all know that Dream Master has like rules. Um, it's, you know, it was a movie that kind of came out, he, three did pretty well, but four came along and it changed everything. Um, so I'm curious for, for the four of you ladies, what was your career like pre-Dream Master and how did it shift after? Um, I guess Lisa, we'll start with you. Pre-Dream Master. Well, I had just um, finished UCLA, the theater arts degree, and I had done one guest star on Hardcastle McCormick. Most of you are too young to probably remember that show. <laughs> okay. Uh, right on. And then I did, like, a I had a role on General Hospital for about six months, and I did a little stint, Teenage Pregnant girl on Young and the Restless. And I'd only done one film called uh, Give Me an F. And at the time, it was called The Big Cheer. Fabulous, it's funny. Sandy, are you here? She loves this movie. Anyway, it's really fun. But I had, so I hadn't done very, very much. And then the opportunity came up to audition for what's happening. What are you doing? Really? Did she? Did you have amazing pictures back then of like? And 
Madonna so look like. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brooke. Um, anyway. <laughs> it's like she's she's shut up, Brooke. She's in a special ed class right now. She's like, Brooke, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for adding that. Yes, anyway, so after, after I got Nightmare and they opened the leather doors and I started doing movies and, and I had brought Brooke along with me so she could actually, actually audition for me because, you know, she, she would do the talking for me. Um, but anyway, since then I got to, I, I did the song in Nightmare on Elm Street, which was really amazing and I was Woo, so yeah. grateful for that. And, um, and, and, and since then I've been able to do a lot of uh, title songs for other movies and uh, have a couple movies I'm doing this year. and. Uh, one coming out with Lisa actually at the end of the year called The Bloody Man, which I hope you guys will see. And uh, yeah. We don't have any scenes together, but we are in the same movie. But we are in the same movie and the same poster. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yes. So that's kind of my story. Brooke, it is your time. <laughs> I've already taken up my allotted time. <laughs> okay, so then I'll go. Oh, wow. Don't do it to go ahead. I have no story to tell. <laughs> Make a ruckus. <laughs> Just make a ruckus. Anyhow, uh, so I had I, I would I had done Just Ten of Us for about a season, and then on hiatus I auditioned for Nine Hundred Elm Street. See, now he's taking my line. Everyone, Don Johnson. Don Johnson. Hey, I gotta do my cameo. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 Here's your baby, Lisa. Yeah. Look what he found on the way to the forum. I gotta go. <laughs> he's a little, he's a little deformed. Or yeah. Anyhow, Are you saying so something about my child? I think he did it. Maybe I don't know who my he did that with. <laughs> he's got quite the jiggly head. Um, so then I, I, I you know, my toy's giving me a finger right now. Eyeball. She's going to be the month ago, darling. Uh, anyhow, so I went back to just the ten of us after um, I filmed Nightmare, and I was blessed to be on that show for a couple of seasons. So that was kind of my focus after that. And then, so I did mostly television. I would love to do another horror movie one day. Hmm. Um, gosh, I was uh, working a lot in television, um, different strokes, two to seven, and then I was up for a role on a different world. And it was Cree Summer's role, Freddie, and I just really wanted it. I was focused in on it. And then Nightmare came up, and it was really juxtaposed right next to my audition with Nightmare on Elm Street. And so when my agent finally called me and said, you booked your role, and I was like, yes! Because Debbie Allen fame was like my hero. I danced on tables and got in trouble and stuff. And so I was like, I got a different world! And she's like, no, no, honey, you got Nightmare on Elm Street. And I was like, what? Okay, because I didn't really watch horror movies. Uh, my father, when I was five years old, took me to go see The Shining. And, uh, and so he didn't tell my mother, and then we were, went to dinner that night, and we are all sitting around the dinner table, because we did that as a family. And I was very, very quiet, and my mom finally looked at me and said, Toy, what is wrong with you? And you know, I got the nerve up inside of me, and I said, Daddy's going to kill us. You know? <laughs> so it kind of scarred me, horror movies. So when I got the movie, I was like, I had never seen Nightmare One, because I'm, I'm truly scared of horror movies. I believe it. I buy into it. I remember when I came to visit you on set, when you were filming in the boiler room oh. up in Pasadena. Yeah, and, and I, I, I walked up this dirt road, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go hang out with Tuesday. He said, hi. And, and Robert came over the hill, and I was like, ah! And he was like, what the toy? Now listen to me. Honey, we gotta shoot, and you can't. <laughs> like, I was a student pretty scared. So after that, I kind of, after Nightmare, I took the ride, and I ended up getting two seasons later the a different world, uh, a different world, world, world. And uh, Jada Pinkett ended up taking over my role, <laughs> so <laughs> that was short lived. And um, yeah, and then I, I kind of did a couple more movies, um, independent movies, and then some commission, a lot of the, you know, NYPD blues and blah, blah, blah. And then I moved over, um, I had my Me Too moment, and I was screen testing for a movie, and I was told some things about how I could actually get that job. And I, I thought I went 
remember how that was? Yeah, you know, and I had never, because I'd been a child actor since I was five, and so I broke down, I said some things to this man, they told me I shouldn't have said, my agent ended up firing me, it was like a debacle. Oh, wow. So I walked off the lot wow. and I was in tears, and I ran into a producer that had hired me when I was 16 years old, and I told him, you know, I was like, this, I was 25, I was like, this is what just happened. And he's like, come meet me at my office on Monday. And I thought, oh God, another one? <laughs> and, you know, and I went wow. though. My mom's like, no, you gotta trust. You can't, you gotta get back on that horse and don't let someone. And um, he ended up getting me a job at Quentin Tarantino's Abandoned Park. And I started producing and directing Woo. writing for them. <laughs> you know, energy between you guys is part of the reason that we love Dream Masters so much because these are people you'd want to hang out with, people you'd want to, you know, be silly with. And <laughs> there's a real chemistry. Like there's there's the frightful, you know, there's the Freddy stuff, but yet there's the moments of the diner, you know, and like some really great stuff. Like can you did Freddy give you guys a lot of time to come together as a group or did you it was it just it all came naturally? Well, I like to say that Annette Benson like, did amazing casting. She cast friends for life, because these ladies are friends for life. And so many times you do a, movie, a film or a TV series or whatever you're doing, and then when it's done, you never see those people again. You, you just don't. Um, this group, of course the conventions help, but we go out of our way to see each other in Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, we're honestly really, really tight, tight friends. Um, I don't know, Brenny, I don't know, did Brenny get a lot of time? I know you guys were coming out. I think he, yeah, I think he did. I mean, I think it was also his input too with the cast, you know, because mm -hmm. after Annette, then he had to go further with it. Mm -hmm. So, I, and, and I think it was really cool because when I was cast first, um, he, you know, brought Lisa in and, and all these people and I was, and he was asking me my opinion. And it was funny because I, I said all these people were great and, it, and they actually got cast. So it was really, really cool. <laughs> so really it's thanks to Tuesday yeah. that yeah. we're in this movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think we had a, just a natural chemistry together, yeah. you know, and we, we really do, you know. But Renny really did have that gathering where we kind of all got together. Do you remember that? Yeah, and then we got, we got together a couple times a couple before times that. Before, like before just we started knowing each other. I was when? I you had to go. I had to go. To your, um, weren't you going? You were or, well, I, yeah, because I got, I got, I got married. Oh, I had to call back was on a Friday, and then I uh, got married on uh, Sunday, and then uh, I was in Hawaii on my honeymoon when I learned I got the role. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I didn't get to go to the gathering, so, and I had to leave my honeymoon early, and. Um, He's now my ex-husband because he wasn't happy that I had to leave for the honey leave for the honeymoon early to go. He never forgave her. Job. <laughs> Such one. All right. No, yeah, no, Renny, Renny did bring us together. I always okay. kind of um, credit him for bringing us together at those barbecues, a couple of barbecues, and we got to hang out. So I feel like the first day of shooting, we were all already connected because we were friends already. When you're young like that, you're like, ah! right. you know, you're like desperate to like connect and especially with fellow actors when we were all young and newbies and you know, so. Yeah, and they stuck us together immediately. Like I know. We shared a dressing yeah. room. Uh, we, Boy was my girl. And then we actually found out that we wore the same prom dress the same year before. <laughs> and it was so 80s, yeah. like it was, you know, black sequins with a taffeta white down here it was hung with these little oh, black dresses. Well, at least you, didn't you think it was like the best dress ever? I mean, the, and then I look at it now, I'm like, what? And then my hair was up in the <laughs> So when I showed her my dress, I don't know how we even got on it. We showed pictures, we're like, oh, we're really meant to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> when did you share a room, with, a room dressing room? Like? You guys had your own. I, did you, I, oh, they, put me, they put me with Andros, so that was always, that was, that was the first step. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> 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 I 
Did we really? We can't male, female. Well, we it had. Was, there was split in the yeah, middle like that. Yeah, they, they had yeah. the accordion doors, yeah. and yeah. he would just yes. open yes. ours. Yeah. So we had one big living room. I kept yeah. my clothes yeah. over for a while. Then I opened it. <laughs> <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> it was the karate, wasn't it? <laughs> Or the hair. It was the hair. The singing, the guitar. How long did you guys date? Three years. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I did not know that. Um, I know <laughs> that you, you, I should have to the floor, but I, I've always wanted to ask this, Brooke. Um, I recently spoke to Screaming Mad George. Oh, wow. About, I love you. Uh, and he spoke very, very highly of you. Um, and I would love to hear about your experiences in your transformation scene because I still. This franchise has a lot of really great moments for effects, but I still think the cockroach scene is probably one of my very favorites ever. Yeah, Screaming Mad George is just stupid talented, and he's really, if you've never, you know, if you're not friends with him on Facebook, or I've ever seen like him being interviewed, he's this little teeny Asian guy with a massively different colored hair, purple, green, orange, you name it, and he laughs at everything, like everything is funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I don't know what's that. Crazy laugh. Yeah, and it was like, oh my god, I think I love this man. And um, yeah, so my transformation probably took about, I guess if I were to count the days, probably about two weeks from the beginning of the cat and then all the molds that you, um, you know, are tortured. Yeah, to, to two, yeah, and you went through those two. I remember I showed up at his studio and he walks in. He had put literally a cockroach motel in the alleyway and brought it in because he wanted to dissect and look very intricately at the cockroach anatomy. Oh, wow. Wow. And so he walks in with a roach motel and it's like packed. Like, you know, roaches oozing out of it. And I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> so we did the molds. Face mold, body mold, all of that fun stuff. And then I had three sets. So we went from, from the workout room to the shrinking hallway to the actual cockroach motel. Um, and we shot that probably over a week, I think uh, the, maybe five days. The, the um, uh, workout room and the hallway were, I think, two days. And then another two or three, two days maybe for the um, actual uh, death scene. So it was, it was probably the, some of the hardest work I'd ever done. And for, for everybody that knows, who doesn't know, I actually moved my cockroach arms. They weren't mechanical. So I had these little <laughs> cups that I kind of put my elbows in, and then we had draped uh, skin, and then you did all of the you know, painting on them. And then I put my arms, they were almost like giant sleeves, and I had a little handle, and then I moved them. They were all on hinges. So, um, cool. so it was really, it was very fun. Yeah, I have a, because I, I remember I was doing my special effects down the hall, so I would always, I was just mesmerized, because this mm -hmm. big, huge hallway, and she gets trapped, and so I'd always go over and watch her. Um, but then I just remember when they said, Brenda said, Brooke, can you make cockroach noises? I was just going to ask about that. And I, I just, just like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, what, do cockroaches make noises? <laughs> yeah, so then I was like, what, what, what do bugs sound like? So I'm like, you just mentioned it, Toyo. How did you have a good experience going through your I loved process? it. I, I was like, oh, this is what the horror movie's all about. I love this. Um, first, I mean, they sent me to go learn how to write a 63 Vespa and uh, have the gears and everything. And I loved it so much, I kept pretending that I didn't really quite get it. They were like, we'll come back tomorrow. I was like, okay. And you know, but I, I got it the first day, but I really enjoyed myself. And then, uh, that is definitely your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> that is. She, she's pulling focus over there. Her daughter? This is her daughter. Oh, that, is, that is Aubrey, but we love her. Um, and then, <laughs> I don't know, it was just a fun process. I just remember they put the mold on my face and the cast, and I love that she's trying to reprimand her daughter right now after the whole thing she just went through. This is classic. And anyway, so it was a fun experience. Mike Strawn, and, uh, who's a dear friend of all of us on Facebook as well, is just really classic. And um, But they did kind of throw things in. They're like, hey, Toya, we made this mechanical ham that's gonna eat your face. And I said, well, it's not, it's not in the script. But by then, the script was like kind of like out the window. <laughs> we didn't yeah. have the script anymore. But anyway, it was gone. And I was just like, well, where is that? The mechanical hand? Like, no, we just thought of it last night. We just, just roll with it. And 
when it hits your face, you're gonna push and there's a guy laying underneath the table with the hand up in the face. And I was like, hey, this is cool. Um, and, but, and I don't even know to the day, to this day, like what that was. People ask me and I'm like, what do you think? I don't know. But it like work. Like I never questioned it. I was like, of course, there's a mechanical hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> because she has a mechanical mind. Yeah. yeah. And maybe you would love that gadget too. So it was, yeah. to me it was like an extension of this gadget. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I'll take it all. So yeah. <laughs> I just love it when he says, want to suck face. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it had no lines in there. It was just like, want to suck face and, and uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Quite frankly, hang on. What you were saying that was so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep leaving that I say no really well. <laughs> We have time for a couple of questions. Do we have anybody who has anything else? You start, yes. I was just going to ask about that. Are there a lot of jerks that, because your scene's iconic and there's like a catchphrase with it, do people come up and say that to you all the time? You want to suck face? Yeah. Oh, all the time. All the time. I was actually traveling to the airport with my boyfriend fairly recently, and someone, you know, I think God bless you if you ever recognize me. I'm just such a little character, and so it's funny, and they're like, oh my God, you want to suck face? My boyfriend looked at me and he's like, do you know this one? <laughs> and he's like, so funny, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> serious, tension-filled, dramatic, but then when you kind of see the background, a lot of goofing off, having fun. What was it like in that movie in particular? Was it, was it, were you trying to draw the tension or were you just having a blast, you know? I think a little bit of both. You know, when, you, when the camera stops, hopefully you're able to just kind of disconnect and, and, and uh, have fun and because you're working, which is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Um, but uh, but when you know when you when the camera rolls, you you do the best you can, and you and you do take it seriously. Yeah. I remember Robert would um, kind of just tell stories. It would would be about like, <laughs> so I'm gonna peel an apple, and everyone's like, and he's like, great, 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 let's do that. We're going to set up the lens, and everything's going to happen. And then so Robert would be like, so toy, let's talk about Othello. <laughs> okay, because I went to high school for the arts, so you know, he knew I was all, all into theater work. And I said, like, sure, let's say, and I, and I said the word Macbeth. And he's like, never say it, you know why? And it was like a 20 minute, and I think everyone was kind of like, uh, what do we do now? And Rob was like, okay, now I'm gonna come get you. And I was like, oh. I think so it was grabby for me. Robert was wonderful and yes. fun. Do you remember when we were in his trailer and those people? Start shaking the trailer? Yes. Okay, there was a mob at San Pedro and it was because she was so hot in her bathing suit, like to oh, die yeah, for. <laughs> and they found out that Robert was there, and again, I would always go visit TC on set. I don't know what my, I'm just like, oh, you're on set, I'll come visit you. But, you know, what else am I on off today? Oh, come on, you like. Oh, I loved you. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and they found out, and then we were in your dressing room just kind of talking with Robert, and next thing you know, we felt it doing this, and it was getting more violent, and we looked out the window, and there was people just pounding, and the news media he was there. He had to go out there, remember? Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't have stopped, and then I think the production was like, I don't know what to do with this. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, there was, there was no security. No, oh, no at the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. No, there wasn't. Yeah. Um, I think we have one uh, time for one last quick question. Do we have anybody? Right there. Do you know? Do you know? Were you guys able to uh, see the movie? <laughs> yeah, so Friday night, it was a Friday night that it opened? In, oh no, I like, this because I live for this. So we, yes, in Westwood. In Westwood, so we decided um, after the movie started playing that all of us 
you know, young cast were going to go in, and we sat in the back row, and we did this for about three weeks yeah. in a row, <laughs> and it was really awesome because we got to experience the movie through your eyes, because you know when you know what's coming, and you know your part, you know what's going to happen, and so it was so refreshing to sit back there, and it was so fun because people yeah. were laughing at things that, oh, they found that funny, Bloody, yeah. oh, they're cheering, yeah. oh, and it was so exciting, and it was so exciting, so we were like addicted. And so we're like, we're coming back Friday! <laughs> <laughs> and nobody like knew we were there. Nobody knew it was so there. great. We just snuck out. Yeah. Yeah. It was really wild. I'll never forget that opening night. My dad was so excited and so proud. I'm a little girl from a girl from Missouri, you know what I mean? And so yeah, it's met a lot of you from Missouri, right? And so he was just so excited. And so I mean my both my parents, but so they rented a limousine and they bought grandma. <laughs> yeah. And we and so because dad wanted me to pull up in style and I'll never ever ever forget it. And then I think that was it that night I had the party. Yeah, it's a Sherman's fabulous party. And a party my at my um, in-laws house in Beverly Hills and had a really fun party. I still have pictures of that. Do you? Yeah. You're wearing oh, a hat. Oh my god, you're wearing a hat. You know it's wearing a hat. I still like to wear a hat. Oh really? Well, I remember when I met you, Lisa, because we were so always reading the book and you had your hair and she's kinda always really frumpy and kind of away from us. And then she's like at the party and then she's like, um, I would love for you to come to my engagement party or whatever birthday or was some or wedding some party for your wedding, right? Yeah, it was. Was it for my wedding? No, it was just an after party. It was an after party. I definitely after party. So I was like because I had the whole cast. You all, all I know is I showed up and like the pearly gates of like heaven opened to this big mansion. I was like, oh my god, she's rich. Did I get right? I just was like, she's like Beverly Hills for my It was great. My clock was like coming up the road. I had these on set. I was like, oh shit, I should have done something. I don't know. I should have rented a car. Something. Wonderful. I think we're uh, officially out of time, but ladies, um, thank you so, so much for being here. Everybody, let's go. Thank you.